So here we are with Carlos in his studio in California, and this is um, a studio visit related to the summer exhibition Intensity at Rhombus Space. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the your studio space and your setup and your um, kind of your practice, what you're working on? Yeah, so um, I have about 500 square feet here, and um, I rent, it's kind of, um, it's an annex to some um, warehouse spaces. So I was so happy to get it. Being here in Santa Cruz, um, I was so used to renting spaces. I've been renting space since I was 18 years old. And um, it always had kind of been like these, um, kind of like behind an old lady's house or, um, you know, really cheap, like kind of warehouse space that got compartmentalized. And then, um, and also uh, just, old chicken coops. I'm very happy to have this because it took me a while to get this space. And I've been here about since 2014. So um, I have a heavy background in pottery. And so that's how it kind of started me into, into ceramics. So I can, um, and I used to work for potters and um, making pieces with artists as well. Um, the process of ceramics is very if you when you get into it there's there's um you, like i've been doing this for so long that i know when i start something i know what it takes all the way through to finish it and, it's, and depending on what time of the year it is it could be super slow it could be super fast things are not always in a perfect situation but sometimes they, they land that way and, and magic happens but um it's very process oriented and you can't leave any um you know eyes undotted in a sense or or they get away from you and um and I really um, admire that when I see people's work that is just kind of like almost flawless. Um, people that use porcelain, I have a, a, a whole other level of respect for when I see their work and it looks like just flawless and perfect. And, and even if it's manipulated, um, you know, and with, with um, underglazed decoration and whatnot. So, and I know what it takes from the start, the time they made that in order to get to that finish line. And, um, and, and the idea of um, putting it in a kiln and, and you're um, taking it from, from mud to stone, you know, that's a very hectic process. What are those spherical stack things behind you? Okay, so this is some new work I've been kind of trying to develop. And um, I, have, uh, I have this concept where um, and once again, I'm, you're kind of getting the sneak preview here. Um, but I was trying these these sculptural pieces, um, um, shape and form, color, and um, those are all bisque fired, which is the second process of firing. But I wanted to have images on the piece, and then have them all monochromatic, almost if it was like um, like a kid's to plastic toy, and with and with these images, and um, and I got some more over here. <laughs> And, um, and so essentially there, I'm trying to make really cute poops, <laughs> like as if it's like a little rabbit poop stack onto each other, like the perfect animal left it in the yard. So it's all easy to clean up. And then from all that, all the stuff we take in, in life and we, a lot of it leaves us and that's kind of whether it's good or bad. And that's kind of was a concept I was having. And so I wanted to have images. More like, much like the stuff I do on my on my flat pieces or my um, cycloramas, and uh, that um, have images that that um, conflict with each other to create an to create another narrative, but on a vessel that has it's basically one big discharge. <laughs> hey, talk a little bit about your the imagery that you use in your work, like you do. It feels like you tell these stories, and it's a little autobiographical at times, but it's also Kind of Americana um, ideas. And then you were talking about juxtaposition. Can you talk a little bit about how you choose the images that you work okay, with? Okay, so uh, basically, I, I think I'm a TV baby. You know, like I, I had one of the, I had one of those parents that kind of, um, they, they were like, they, kind of the television was the babysitter kind of a thing. And then um, like it's always on, even to this day, if I go to my parents' house, like the TV is just on and it's like loud. And, but from, but from that, I, re I remember watching this show and this guy thought in old fifties sitcoms. So like, um, like for instance, um, 
he would think like when something was going wild, he would think of an episode um, of like something exploding from an old car wreck from a movie. So they'd have these clips of that. And I always found that very interesting. And then as I got older, I kind of would think in that in that sort of a way. And so I rem so I used to just watch cartoons and watch like just in, growing up in Southern California, it's saturated with television. Um, like at any given time, I love Lucy's on a channel. And so, you know, things of that nature. And so, and so I always think of like, um, like how, how cartoons use a lot of um, uh, allegory, and, you know, and, um, and so I kind of have the, the same sort of thing. And um, so I'll, I'll remember something and I'll have something that, rel that relates to me in a certain way from something and I, and I have an image and then I just transpose it um, next to something else that's, you know, um, uh, kind of the complete opposite to give it a different narrative. And so for instance- Yeah, uh, show us that one. Yeah, let's look at this one. Okay, so these old cartoons, when um, this was like this kind of father and son and it kind of was, it was kind of taken from um, Mice and Men and um, so he, this, this son's always trying to do good by his dad. And the dad's always like has some master plan or something and getting him to do something. And then, you know, and so, so if you, if you kind of remember that and just the looks on their face and everything like that, just kind of sets, sets the thing. But then I throw the narrative of um, this kind of old motherly kind of cooking and tasting things, you know, and, um, and then if you put, then, then you match that with, I kind of got these, these things coming off and kind of kind of create a sort of energy and then i try to create the tone the tone with the color and the saturation and then if then then i like to use the title to kind of help the image along and um this this title is she has it in for us so he's most likely discussing with his son how the mother's trying to poison him with this food you know so and, and so and that's just one kind of take i have on it and, you know, you know, and so, um, and that might've been taken from, you know, who's some, you know, ate something bad or, and you just kind of blow it up in your head. And I, I was kind of running with a theme of that, like someone, you know, trying to poison someone, um, just because they didn't like them for that, that day. <laughs> so that was, and it kind of, because in the cartoons, they always come back to life, you know, so you always think of it that way as well. We were just talking a little bit, or I was asking you, um, about what you had written in your statement about the juxtaposition of violence and entertainment on tv and i feel like yeah. that comes through in your work definitely well you know so my, my friend was was telling me these was telling me the story the other day and um it kind of really reminded me this kind of falls right in the sink you know in the in the early 80s um all these there was all these gang task force going through los angeles and they were just rounding people up and da 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 and so a lot of people moved to Riverside County, like almost like it's like a, what do you call it? Um, on the lamb a little bit. And so it created this whole other culture and it get caught, it got kind of really gnarly. And so, but meanwhile, like you, you at seven o'clock, you'd watch this news program and it, um, you know, showing, you know, everyone's just like on the ground, helicopters everywhere. And done. it's crazy, like drug bus, crack cocaine and all this stuff. And, you know, how many people were shot in Los Angeles next day at seven o'clock and then boom, I Love Lucy would pop up. It was just such a weird thing, I think, within like 30 seconds and then buffered by like a cookie commercial about like, you know, um, Keebler elves or something, you know what I mean? And like, so as I thought that was, but it always kind of seemed normal until I went, until like I didn't have a television and it, it was kind of, you're kind of just des desensitized to it. So when you, when you went outside your home, like you could be at a birthday party and all of a sudden, like something would, could happen, you know, like, a, like on your way home, you could see something and it was like no big deal. You know what I mean? Like there'd be like a, some guy got ran, ran over on the highway with his, with them from his motorcycle and you're going by and it's just like, oh, that'll be on the news later. You think, you don't think like, wow, that guy's dead or, you know what I mean? So it's, I think it's because of the television and because of all that, that makes you desensitized. And then I think a lot of times, like, you know, just like watching things like, like old cartoons, um, 
have a giant piece of dynamite in their hand and it blows up and just their face is black. You know what I mean? It's so like, you know, you just kind of think like, wow, that, that, that's funny. You know, not like, Oh, the guy almost lost his hand or, you know what I mean? So I think it all kind of washes with itself like that. And then can you talk a little bit about your, um, Alita? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that piece? Like how you chose to compose it? My mother's German. And I have I had a grandma in Germany, and then my 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 dad is half Mexican, and so he has a grandmother or he has a mother in Mexico City, and so it was always this weird thing where like no one was ever called grandma. It was like abuelita, oma, you know what I mean, <laughs> like things like that nature. So she passed away a few years ago. I never really knew her that well, you know. She never came around a lot. She was very. Um, she was um, real, real, real pretty and, and real like um, kind of like traditional in a, in a sense. But my but my grandma in Germany, I knew very well. And she was in and, and that and that's basically this whole like garment type of thing was that was her, you know, just in an older body. And so that was sort of like a um, an homage to, to my to my to my uh, abuelita that that this piece and it shows her like baking and doing these things, which I don't know if she ever did that. I don't think she ever did, <laughs> but it was the idea that when you, when you, when you turn the piece around, it's sort of like a, um, a death piece. It's like a, you know, and it, it kind of has a format of like gr growing up, dying, this whole circle of life. And so, you know, I was, you know, transposing that on there, like how I would like to think of her that way mixed in with the idea of all the, um, the other stuff going on in the piece and the idea that it can be visual you know you can you can look at it at any point and start it, it didn't have a starting or ending point well cool. and yeah you work between the flat surface and ceramic and then the sculptural surfaces does it feel different to you to go between those two it it, it does it does i think i think that like i maybe it's just a just wrapping your head around this 2d surface and like looking at the, how to um, how the composition should work, but when you throw a, a sculptural element involved, um, and not and also too, it's it's not immediate. Like 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 I use underglazes, and um, a lot of times um, uh, the purple is is when it's raw is um, pink pinkish, and so is the blue, and um, and so when you lay it down in 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 um, like in uh like so i like i'll do the sides and all these different things you know and, and for, for it all to come together because this is what i'm starting with like this color right here and so um um so getting the color saturations you don't really see it until it's fired so like you can have samples all you want but sometimes you might get a little heavy with the brush or a little too light with the brush and so i find it very difficult because you can blow the whole thing with just color like bad color and so it could it could look tiny or it could look bright, you know. So you spend all this time painting this thing and you get hours and hours, then it just kind of goes into the it's like game time and you either win or you don't, in a sense, you know. Right. And, and it seems as much yeah. The last part you can't control so much. Yeah, I mean to a point, but sometimes it, it just takes it's like some pieces just they do an extra something that's magical. And sometimes they're exactly what you wanted or what you expected. And sometimes it just took a left turn on you. I mean, you know, so now I'm trying to move away from the ceramic look and trying to get into like making ceramic. And I've always been interested in that as far as um, taking like um, taking something that, you know, that's another material and, and making it uh, and making it look like something else. It's like, you know, um, so like, uh, like another thing I had been doing was um, uh, getting in the tiki the tiki zone like selling tiki stuff at these places in los angeles and um so like i got this like tumbler and so it's the same thing it's under glaze decoration with with all my techniques to make it look like a piece of uh like a coconut you know and so oh, then that's that's huh that's a really nice finish on that yeah yeah and, it, and it's all sanitary it's like microwave safe it's like you know that in itself is wow. a pretty good fee you know it's, it's porcelain Wow. And so, um, yeah, but, but with, with that all being said, like just getting that surface, like mm -hmm. I know how to get it. It's like, a, you know, 
right. and, then, and then and this and this one turned out really exceptionally well like it just like gleams when it hits a little bit of light you know yeah yeah that's, that's yeah. awesome um well thank you for chatting and uh i'm glad you're in the show and um yeah i'll cut i'm gonna just stop recording